What's up guys, Johnny here. Welcome back. Today, I got my brand new Immersion RC Rapid Fire. I've been eagerly waiting on this product. I've been really excited about it. And today, I'm gonna to share with you my initial thoughts. And unfortunately, they're not that good. Stick with me, I'll let you know. I'll explain what's going on with this. Alright guys, so here we are. I've been using my Immersion RC Rapid Fire module here with my HDO goggles. The nice thing about the HDO goggles is that it's just a straight snap-in replacement. You don't have to worry about getting supplemental power like you do with some of the older Dominator goggles. Um, like as if I was using my Dominator V3s. So anyway, I've had a couple of days to play with it. And there's a few kind of first impressions I want to share. So. First thing I noticed uh, when I tried out this module is when I went into the menus, I tried to do a spectate mode because I wanted to search around and try to find the channel that one of my quads was on. There's no spectate mode on this thing. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. It's kind of a standard feature. I've kind of rely on my LaForge and my TrueD. Um, but I'm really hoping that a future firmware update is going to get that fixed, and that's really a minor issue. So I'm sure that'll be fixed in time. But that's not why I got this module, right? We all know that we get this because when we're on the race course, when we're flying freestyle, we want the best picture quality possible. We want less interference, we want less um, static, we want less um, glitches in the screen, we want less multipathing. That's a big thing for when we're doing indoor racing or flying in concrete environments or bando type environments. So all that's why this is really a popular module, why so people are so excited. The hope is really that we're going to get something that's like a clear view but at a significantly lower price and working in the, in the module format inside the goggles. So anyway, I went out to the field yesterday. I set up sort of a regional qualifier light type course, and I wanted to try flying those things here with the rapid fire module. So it was very easy to use. I really like the menu system. The way that you select the channels at first is really, really simple, very intuitive. So I'm a big fan of that. The one thing I don't like about the menu though is there's no way to exit the menu. So when you click the button, you go into the menu, you look around, once you set things, you're kind of stuck there. It's not a big deal because you can do everything you need to do from that screen. You don't have to get to the main screen, right? They're just different ways to change channels, but I do kind of wish there was a way to exit the menu. Again, not a big thing, something that I'm sure will be fixed with firmware, no big deal. But again, I got this thing for the performance. So I did set everything up. I set it up in the rapid fire mod, uh, in the rapid fire mode, which is the mode where it will take the two different signals of the two different antennas and process them and combine them into one. And that's the technology that Clearview uses and now rapid fire to try to reduce the glitches and artifacts that you see inside your picture. So anyway, what I did on this track, um, I was just flying normal. I set up both my Dominator V3s using my LaForge module, as well as flying with these, the HDOs, um, so that you can kind of compare what the different DVRs look like of each of them. The first thing, the very first thing that I noticed when I was using my rapid fire module, there's a little bit of noisy artifacts in the picture. You can see it in the sky, kind of white diagonal lines. Um, and at first I thought maybe that was my camera and my drones and all my drones. Even though I haven't noticed it before, you know, maybe I just didn't notice it before. But when I later checked out the, the video from this one here in the LaForge, it didn't have that same artifacts. So that was really strange. I'm getting added noise by using this module. Um, the other thing that I want to address is that the picture that I was seeing through the rapid fire module, it's very, very saturated, very bright, vibrant. Now, I don't know if they did that because upon first inspection, someone to look at two screens, the LaForge screen versus the one with the rapid fire, and they see that extra pop to the picture. Maybe they'll think, oh, this is a better picture. It's, it's clearly worth the money. But 
the added saturation, just the way the picture looked, made it a lot harder for me uh, to see the obstacles and see my way flying around. Now, this is also because I was probably flying later in the day, getting towards the end of the day. And as it was getting darker out, just the way that it was kind of oversaturating the ground, the darks on the ground, was making it harder to see than it would be when I was using my True D or my LaForge. Um, so that was kind of weird. And especially when you combine it with something like um, the Predator or the Predator V2, which already has some very saturated colors, very bright, you know, the blue colors, the dark and light transitions during the end of the day, it starts to really exaggerate that look and gets pretty hard to see. So I didn't like that at all. Which gets me on to the other, the other point that I noticed. Now, I've never seen anyone mention this before. I haven't seen people mention the other parts either, but I've never seen anyone talk about the added latency of doing rapid fire processing. I can tell you that when I set up that track and I started flying, that was the worst I've flown in probably months. I was doing a lot of extra corrections as I was trying to fly. It was harder to hit gates at high speeds. Um, and at first I thought, you know, maybe I was just having an off day. Then I thought maybe there was an issue with my quad. Um, it was really strange at first. In retrospect, I think what was actually going on is I think there's a little bit of added latency to doing that video processing inside the rapid fire, which to me, becomes an instant deal breaker in my ability to fly a course fast. I can't use this in rapid fire mode and fly at the pace I want to do and pull out the results I want in races. It's just not going to work. Now, it's not a huge difference in latency. I don't want to make it seem like, oh my God, there's this massive latency. It's very, very slight, but it is something you do feel. It's, it's almost like that feeling when you get used to using um, crossfire and then you go back to using just a straight Tyrannus, you notice a little bit of latency difference. It's not quite as smooth that you can kind of get used to it. It's sort of like that, but it's enough latency where it did impair my flying. I had trouble doing moves that I was not having trouble with at all before. Even more so on this, what I'll say is I've also ran into a number of glitches when trying to use it. Sometimes when I plug in the module and I go to use it, It'll be this mostly black screen of just like a scrolling window flying through my goggle view. Um, I tried to record it with DVR so I could show you, but that DVR actually showed us just straight black. Um, I had no picture. I unplugged the goggles, I plug them back in, everything was fixed and it worked. So again, not a big deal, but definitely a V1 type product issue. Worse than that though is one time when I was flying the course, I hear this thing keep beeping. So it'll beep to let you know when it acquires a lock. A lock is how it knows that it's viewing actual signals and can do the processing, and when it loses the lock. And this time when I was flying, as I was going around, it started beeping on me, beep on, beep off, beep on, beep off, and then in the middle of it, the screen went black, came back, scrolled a few times, and then came back to normal. And this is while I was flying going through gates, and if that sort of issue were to happen during a race, that could be catastrophic for you. So that really, really, really made me nervous. Now, it's only happened once out of probably 20 different packs that I've flown, but that really makes me nervous. That that has never happened with a Trudy or a LaForge for me. So that just really makes me nervous. Again, just another thing to watch out for. Hopefully this will be a firmware update, gets that issue resolved. Um, yeah, it's just really concerning. Um, what I also did though, is I also broke out one of my micro quads running a micro eagle camera, and I flew that out here in the backyard. And what I wanted to look at was the difference in performance with the rapid fire of running in legacy mode versus running in rapid fire mode. So what legacy mode does is it basically treats these two antennas the same way a Trudy or a LaForge does, just standard diversity. So what that means is whatever signal has the best RSSI, it's gonna switch to that and show you that picture. So when I brought that quad out here and I tried it with this rapid fire module, what you'll notice is that if I go to rapid fire mode, you see the noise show up. If I switch to legacy mode, the noise goes away. There's no more noise in that processing. You'll notice that the very bright, vibrant colors go back to looking normal the way I expect with the other modules. So it looks just like a Trudy or a LaForge. Then while flying, what I'll say is that when I first flew in rapid fire mode, I could tell that latency, I didn't quite have the same control and same feel. I switched this thing to legacy mode, all the latency, all the feel, it was totally fixed. That told me that there was definitely an issue with the rapid fire mo um, mode adding additional latency that's not there in legacy. So what I'll say is the performance in legacy mode for me has been great. It's been just like my Trudy, just like my LaForge. Um, so in the end, what I feel like I have right now is basically a double the price Trudy module. So for me, this module probably doesn't make sense for most people just yet. 
I will say that I'm a big fan of Immersion RC. I'm a big fan of a lot of products that they put out. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Tony Cake out in Reno, Nevada last year. He's a fantastic guy, extremely smart, and you know, just one of the really coolest, funniest guys you're gonna meet. A really great person in FPV. Um, so I do have faith in Immersion RC. There's gonna be updates, there's gonna be firmware patches. This is a V1, and you have to keep that in mind if you get it. Right now, what I'll say is I'm not gonna be running in rapid fire mode until I get these things fixed, at least not for races. You know, for practice testing, I'll keep trying it and seeing what works. Um, but I'm either gonna switch back to the True D or I'm gonna run this thing in legacy mode for all my future races until it's resolved. Um, again, just a thing to watch out for. So I had these experiences. Again, I've only been trying it for 20 packs, only had it for a couple of days. I wanted to share those thoughts with you guys. If you guys are looking at getting it, just wanna let you know what to watch out for, what my experience was. I wanna make sure you guys know what I know. And um, you know, I hope you guys appreciated that update. So it pains me to bring you kind of this sad update it still is a decent module. It's just for the price with the trouble with the rapid fire module. It's just, it's not worth it yet running in rapid fire mode. Hopefully that's going to change in the near future. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to bring that to you. Share the, my findings with you. I wish there were much better news, um, but things are what they are. So anyways, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.